Hey guys, welcome to WC Kids Worship. My name is Ben, and all month we've been talking about focus, and what it is to focus on God. Because if we focus on God, we can learn a whole lot more about Him. And then it gets a lot easier and we can trust Him with everything that we have. So, today, since it's the last day of the month, I thought we'd play the ultimate focus game possible. Today's game is called Super Cup Shuffle. The way that this works is I have a three cups, and under one of them is an egg, okay? And I'm going to shuffle all the cups, and you guys are gonna need to focus on which cup is which, so that you can tell by the end, after they're all shuffled, which one has the egg. Are you ready? Let's start our first round. So it's starting under the middle cup, you ready? I'm gonna go slow this first time. Which cup has the egg in it? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? All right, let's try. Hey, hey, not bad. All right, round two. This one's gonna be a little bit faster. You ready? Is it in this one? Is it in this one? You think it's in this one? Let's see. Hey, hey, that was pretty good. All right, last one. I'm gonna try and go the fastest I've gone this whole time. You ready? Remember which one it is? Is it this one? Is it this one? So you're telling me it's in this one. Let's try and see the other ones to be sure. No? It's gotta be in this one, right? Nice! Wow! That was a really awesome job. That last one was a little bit tougher, but uh, you did a good job anyway. Let's get uh, up on our feet and get ready for some worship.
guys, it's me, Kyle. I didn't know if you'd recognize me without the lights on and with the flashlight, but today we are playing flashlight tag in the lab, which means I might have to... Kyle! Oh, uh, be right back. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Hi, guys. Have any of you seen Kyle? I'm trying to catch him. You're never gonna catch me! <gasps> I heard you! I heard you! <laughs> Oh, wrong way. Oh. Oh, no. Kyle! Kyle! <laughs> Thanks for that. Man, it is crazy back there. Everything is so dark. You can't see anything. It's like it's like a maze in the lab. Uh, you're, you're tripping over things. You're running oh, off things. Oh. Oh. I better go check on her. Shh. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, where was I? I was uh, talking about lights, flashlight tag. Where else? Um, Got oh! you! Oh! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Wilson, Wilson just got me. I'm the king. <laughs> okay, uh, king. Hey, do you, do you mind uh, putting the spotlight on me real quick? Okay, yeah. Perfect. Light illuminates everything that we see and even some things that we can't. So today on A Closer Look, we're talking about just that. Stay tuned. Ah! Samantha? Samantha? When we think about light, we usually think about lamps or the sun. But there's so many different ways to use light. Like, uh... Kyle, I am... Hey, hey! No spoilers, please! Kyle, I am your... <laughs> light isn't just something out of bulbs or from the sun. Light is also lasers! Oh. But what good do lasers even do? Well, they look cool. But looking cool isn't a reason to be talking about it on this show. I mean, this is science that we're dealing with here, people. What's the practical application? First, uh, the fact that you care about the content of this show means the world to me, so thank you. And second, lasers can be used in so many different ways. It can help uh, shape people's eyes so they can see better. Oh, like a uh, LASIK. Yeah, you know, my dad had that done before we couldn't even read a stop sign, but now we can read the newspaper over my mom's shoulder when they're in separate rooms. Wow, exactly. <laughs> and there's also LIDAR. Ooh! What's that? Well, it's basically a radar that uses lasers. So we use light to scan entire areas to take an incredibly detailed photograph that we normally couldn't see with the naked eye. Uh, check it out. <gasps> Look, an entire ancient city covered by trees for hundreds of years, and we discovered it using LIDAR. See, the city couldn't be seen because the trees had covered it up, but we found it with light using LIDAR. Plus, they sound super cool. Yeah, they do. <laughs> also, because high-powered lasers are accurate over long distances, we can measure things like elevation very, very... Houston? have a problem very accurately <laughs> but that's some of the small picture stuff about light but what about the big picture stuff like about supporting life on our planet well we're going to talk about all of that right after this i will yeah yeah
Well, hello there. Who are you looking at? You looking at me? Huh? You looking at me? Are we rolling? Oh, <clears throat> hello. I'm Kellen, and we've been having a lot of fun taking a closer look at the world around us. So I have a mirror here, but it's not just any mirror. It's a two-way mirror. The way it works is that one person can see through it from the side where it's darker, and the person on the other side sees a reflection of themselves when the light is on them. So here's me, but when I stand behind it and change the lighting, can you see me now? Cool, right? I'm seeing a reflection of myself, but if we change the lights again, I see you. <laughs> cool, right? All right, well, we'll come back to that later. So our story today actually comes from two different books of the Bible. Now, they're both pretty famous passages. The first is from the book of Matthew, where the Pharisees are asking a question of Jesus. First, let me explain who the Pharisees were. They were a group of religious leaders who tried to honor God by following a bunch of religious rules. The problem was they focused so much on following the rules that they didn't love God or other people very well. They also didn't like how Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, and they didn't like how everyone seemed to be following after him. When one of the Pharisees asked his question, he was really trying to put Jesus to the test and see if Jesus might say something that would get him in trouble. So he asked Jesus this question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now the law he was referring to was the law in the Old Testament that had lots of rules. Lots of rules for all kinds of things like what kind of work you could do on certain days of the week or making sure you covered your water wells or to not eat owls. Seriously, it's in there, check it out. So Jesus answers them and says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Jesus basically sums up the law with those four verses. There are more than 600 rules in the Old Testament. And Jesus says here what you need to do. Love God, love people. That's it. Crazy, right? But how do we love someone? I mean, what is love? The Apostle Paul had some things to say about love in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not dishonor others. He also says that love does not look out for its own interests. Love is full of joy. It always protects, it never gives up. Love never fails. Now, that's a lot of beautiful words about love, but what does it look like in our everyday life? What does it look like for love to be patient? Okay, what if your little brother or sister has destroyed the Lego tower you built for the third or fourth time? Showing them love might mean that you're patient and that you don't get angry at them. What does it look like for love to be kind? Well, maybe there's a new kid at school or at camp, and maybe they don't look or sound like you or any of your friends. It may not be easy, but to show that person love means to show kindness. Invite them to sit with you at lunch or play with you at recess, even if your other friends don't want to. What does it look like for love to never fail? That's a big one, right? To say that love never fails? Well, I don't think Paul was saying that love is always easy. It's not. And sometimes we might feel that love has failed when you try to show someone kindness or patience and they make fun of you or they ignore you. But I think maybe Paul is saying that we can't give up. And if we continue to show people love, it will change them and change us, even if we can't see it immediately. I think it's also good to remember that God is described as love. And what God did by sending us his son Jesus will never fail. Even when we mess up, God still loves us, and we can show that same love to others. Here, let me show you something. So we're back at this two-way mirror. Remember that it works because of light. When you light up one side of the mirror and lower the light on the other side, 
the person that has the light shining on them is able to be seen. So when I shine the light on myself, I can look in the mirror and see myself. Hey, Kellen. But when we turn the light down on ourselves and we turn the light up on the other side of the mirror, we turn the light on others. We turn the focus on other people and we can see who they are and what they need. When we take a closer look at others, we're able to see them as God sees them and live for God by loving them. Pretty incredible, right? So as you go home and as you meet new friends in the next few weeks, remember that you can live for God by showing others God's love. And keep a lookout because there are so many things to learn about God when you take a closer look. I'll see you guys next time. Do you ever wonder how we got this amazing world around us? It's all because of four little words. Let there be. Oh, I know this one. Oh, light. <laughs> light is the main source for life on our planet. Light is the sole source for food creation on our planet. For instance, we need light to grow our fruits and our vegetables. But have you ever wondered why? It's all because of a little process known as photosynthesis. Here's how it works. The sun shines on us, and the plants use that energy to turn carbon dioxide, which we cannot breathe, into oxygen. And oxygen is what we breathe. So next time you take a deep breath, think a plant, because plants are pretty important. Thanks, plants. We need light to see, yes, but light comes in a spectrum that makes our world beautiful. For instance, if we didn't have this various spectra of light, our world might look like... I don't like it. Oh, man, I got Neapolitan. How am I gonna know which one's the chocolate? But because we do have different kinds of light, our world looks like... Figured it out. <laughs> From clean solar energy to maintaining the Earth's temperature to letting us know when to go to sleep at night, light plays a huge role in our everyday life. Everything we do here at A Closer Look requires light. After all, we need light to take a closer look. Oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you uh, leave in any ice cream for me? Ah, uh, we left you a little strawberry. <laughs> a plant that gets the right amount of sunlight will thrive and grow. <laughs> I am so full of sun energy, I could not be more psyched. <laughs> but if the plant doesn't get the right amount of light, what? People can be the same way. Sometimes when a light isn't shining on someone, we can't see the details of them in their life. That's why we gotta do everything we can to light others up, shining a light on others and showing them love. Well, uh, hey, Wilson, can, can you fix that spotlight, please? Got it. shine a light on Samantha, I can see how enthusiastic she is. And I can also see that she likes it when others are just as enthusiastic as her. <laughs> I know that she gets excited about even my craziest idea. <laughs> Way to bring the fun, Samantha! Oh, hey, thanks, Kyle! <laughs> and when I shine a light on Wilson, I can see how smart he is and how he makes all of us smarter. It's true. <laughs> and I won't let his grumpiness get in the way of telling me so. Oh. Oh, hey, 
<laughs> what are you doing to shine a light on your friends? How are you seeing them better? Well, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us and for taking a, a closer, closer look. look. <laughs> oh, I want to. I wanna yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, high five again. High five! You're doing it! <laughs> Charlie! I did not secure that, guys. I am so sorry. Jesus said that the most important thing was to love God and to love other people. And we could do that by following the golden rule and treating other people the way that we want to be treated. Instead of thinking about yourself all of the time, think about all the things that God has done for you. God has done so much for all of us. And I think we need to think about that everywhere that we go. Think about spreading God's love. So, before we leave for this week, I'm gonna ask you guys to think about this week's key question. Just talk about it with whoever you're with. How do you focus on others? Take a second and just talk about it. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.